Welcome to Tigers Untapped, a Bluff City Media podcast. Stepping up to the microphones are your hosts, Trey Lasley and TJ Willis. Pull up your chair, grab your favorite brew, and enjoy the conversation. Now, let's get to the show. Welcome, welcome, welcome. T- uh, Kenny, you have a trash can in there? TJ just burped in here and I'm about to vomit. <laughs> Right to your left. What uh? What did you have for dinner? Uh, leftovers. So there were some red beans and rice, and then like a chicken. Well, it smells. It smelled like leftover. <laughs> and then chicken and broccoli casserole. I think is what it was. Well, are you ready for uh, dessert? Happen. Oh, what in? The, hold on. What is that? Uh, this was gifted. Ugh. To us, this was a uh, welcome for William the Fourth. We had a gummy pickle sent to us, um, and uh, the three of us are about to eat it. Wait, what? Yeah. I'm not sure that's a good idea. Uh, while Trey does Packaging that, on this, we it's... are drinking a Mop Top. Oh, this <laughs> from Hamplehine Mop Top. You have to smell it's it. English-style brown ale. <laughs> I just took a sip. I love, I love pickles, by the way, so uh, I just wasn't anticipating it actually <laughs> that... smell. Smelling like a bag of uh, dill, dill pickle flavored uh, sunflower seeds. That's very pickly. Like How are we gonna smell. do that? Am I gonna cut the? Oh, it's much. That's dense, dude. Yeah. The- <laughs> oh my <laughs> gosh! Is- what? Are- this is much thicker than I was oh. anticipating. This. What being. kind of show is this? What have we gotten into? What are we doing here? Well, basketball's over, so we have to start doing fun things now. Are you saying basketball wasn't fun? This. Looks rough, no. but it actually may be better than the who uh, wants? Memphis Wichita State game. <laughs> wants, I'll take that part. Who wants the still? I'll Here I come. That. No, I got it. <laughs> give Kenny that big. Kenny, you want the tip? No, I'll take. Give me that right this there. This is the stem. Kenny's want, getting oh, yes. the tip. Dude, there you go. This thing yeah. is. Why is it so sticky? I don't know. It's also very. It's very dense. Like I don't think you realize. Like hi, Trey. See if it hears this. Oh, do you think that picked up on the mic? Uh-huh. I Okay. Gosh, this plastic Are we knife. Just eating a li- okay. It's so picky. I'm just going to oh, bite off the rest cuz Here we go. All right, 1 2 3, ready? Oh. Oh, it's not bad. It tastes like Jolly Rancher. Yeah, it's not that bad, but very pickly. Mm. Yeah, it's not. Jolly Rancher. That's not bad. It's yeah, bad. It is weird. No, that's a green app. That's a green apple Jolly Rancher. 100%. 100%. That's pretty good. Actually, I kind of like it. I but, like it too. But it, the smell is throwing it, it is off. Pickle. Yeah, 100. percent I mean, the aftertaste is pickle, but the taste, like when you're biting into it, is like a green apple Jolly Rancher. You know, most of it's green apple, but the, oh, what kind of ASMR are we putting into the mics right now? I might finish that. Yeah, that's pretty good. It's not bad. It's very dense though. Like, oh. hey, shout to our. Uh, Big fan of the show, family friend Jonathan. He's the one that sent it to us. It was an expensive gummy. Jay Mac. It was like eleven dollars for that gummy. It's a good gummy though. It's still in my mouth. It's I still can't. weird that that's like green apple, but also pickle. But it's not bad. I'm gonna be chewing for the rest of the episode. Just keep it in there. Just suck on it. All right, tell the people what we're drinking. I don't know that uh, this pairs well with green apple. Welcome to the show, Trey. What? We did th- we did this. Did you? Yeah, we did this. Oh, I was opening the Mop Top by Hampline for anyone that missed it. Um English style brown, brown ale. ale. This is not pair well with the pickle it is gummy. Not. I could so, not imagine. Uh don't do that. Which is similar to us not pairing well with Wichita State in the American womp, womp, Conference. Womp, womp, tournament. Womp, 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 womp. What an absolute joke, by the way. Um, the Penny wanted to call the fans out and say that people were asking for him to be fired. He's done a great job, et cetera, et cetera. And then to come out and lose yeah, I the mean, first game to the 12 seed in what really should have been a one-bid league. But FAU shat the bet as well. So UAB sneaks their way in. Um, nothing about that game was fun at all. From tip to finish, zero fun was had. Yeah, I think that's fair. 
it just you found yourself down two tutties again in the second half late like you did last time you played them at home fought your way back grabbed the lead felt like it was going to be hey we're sneaking out of here with a dub maybe they'll wake up after this and then no just decided hey we're going to go ahead and not make the quarterfinals of the american commerce tournament for the first time ever unbelievable and uh lose to the 12th seed what a joke so i'll go back fitting into the season though i'll go back to the start of your statement um just for clarification i did not want penny fired I don't think anybody realistically wants Penny. I just want to get that out there so people will stop saying that we want Penny Fire. Everybody that's a fan of this basketball team, this city, this university, wants nothing more than him to be the most successful coach we've ever had. Yes, because we'd be winning games. And that's all I want is to win games. And we're not doing it. We didn't do it for the second half of the year. Be better. Started 15 and 2. Everything was beautiful. Top 10. Looking at a three seed, and then you go seven and eight down the stretch in your last fifteen games to finish twenty two and ten. It's not great, Bob. Well, my question is: is how does that jive your statement right there, TJ? How does that jive with your evil plan to sabotage Penny Hardaway? Because you are a clown, apparently, according to some, who wants to sabotage him. I don't even. I don't even know where they got that from. Like, I, I literally have never once said fire him. Now, there have been probably some comments made that if the the how the whole scandal thing falls out, however that comes about, like I could see if it's bigger than we originally expected, like it's actually an iceberg, it it could affect him, right? But in terms of winning on the court, like in terms of winning and losing, like I, I think he's earned himself a bad year, right? Last year wasn't right. great, the but they part still about it won. The and the complaining title. of like, it's never enough. I don't think anybody complained about the results of last year. Like everybody was pretty presently surprised. I mean, outside of the fact that you were on the eight nine seed line, sure. like that was frustrating. But I think everybody was relatively happy winning the conference tournament, beating the number one team in the country. I mean, you're a blown call away from making the Sweet Sixteen. Like, yeah, I had no complaints about last year. I don't think I remember anyone. Especially, about I think, year. being last year, going into it, everybody thinking, ah, oh, this isn't an IT team. Like, this team's not – they're not built to to make a run or even make the tournament sure. necessarily. Like, and it, it did feel – You got Kendrick and you got DeAndre. Yeah. If something happens to one of them, the season, like, ride it off, it's done. Sure. And Kendrick went down 80% of the games with an ankle injury. Every game. So you're just actually – Living life on the edge there. I think everybody was pleasantly surprised, gave him his props last year. Yeah, last year was a good year, all things considered. Yeah. So and then it's weird to come in. Yeah, I mean, yeah, people are frustrated, but it's because, you know, we were actually picked to be one of the top two teams. Hey, this is easily going to make the con- or the NCAA tournament teams primed to make a deep run. You got a bunch of fifth year guys that have yep. been around, played a lot of ball. Like, I think it's okay for people to be frustrated. And, and it's not about, they're frustrated because Penny can't coach or Penny is a bad coach. That's I think the thing whatever you want to think about it. Frustrate right? people are it's it seems from the outside looking in for most in discussions that we have, whether it's in the Discord, or wherever, most of the stuff that's impacting the team seems very fixable. Sure. The roster composition to first start. Right. S- establishing some sort of identity. Culturally, well, you've hung your hat on defense, and then you totally changed that this yeah. year. The roster composition, the lineups, like they're just th- bringing. I mean, back to roster, make it like a dude leaving the team, and then bringing him back against players' wishes. Yeah, I mean that's all things that are like avoidable and fixable. Player too, you know, it wasn't like you, you lost JQ or David Jones or Naquan and right. then brought them back. Was a guy who's done nothing for so you. So I think that's year. I think in it, anyway. I mean, we could go on forever. I'm just saying. I think that's what's frustrating is like it seems like there's a lot of obvious things that continue to happen that sure. could be easily could be fixed fairly easily. Of course, ten out of ten times. We're not saying fire Penny. Let's clear that up. Yeah, not at all. I'm um, not saying that. All right, TJ. Before this tournament, we graded the season. Now, with the result 
of a, I don't even, what it, the first, second round, it wasn't the quarterfinals, it was the second round of the American Athletic Conference Tournament, losing to Wichita State, who was 15 and 18 on the year. <sighs> what is your final grade for the season? What did I say last time? Like a, I think you said a C. C, C minus, maybe? Yeah. I mean, it can't be anything, a D? Like, I mean, it's got to drop, right? Yeah, I mean. Uh, if you say an F, I, I get that. I I'm, that at seems an, I'm at an intense. F. It seems intense. I mean, a D on the grading scale is very, you're at like, what's a, a D was like 66, no, 66 was an F, wasn't it? Yeah. It was you're like 67, 68, or 69 is a D. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think I'm, I think I'm at an F. I don't know if I can say F, honestly. It, TJ. It, uh, well, hear me out. You just did something that's never happened before. We've never not made the quarterfinals. We just finished fifth. Yeah. Really tied for fifth. I'm gonna say you tied for fifth. And the tenth best conference in the entire country. It I mean that's it, and F absolutely seems disgusting. Outrageous, though, considering it's also wild that we were five and two against it, tournament teams. Yes. You it, it's an F seems egregious considering you went on the ten game run. Or maybe it better explains the F and how you ended up what, twenty two and ten? What was it? Twenty two and ten. Twenty two and ten? Yeah. yeah. Um so maybe that better explains an F, honestly. But to be a – oh, yeah, I know you said it's technically a second-round exit, but what felt like a first-round exit of yeah. the conference tournament and fifth in conference. I can't tell you the last time we ended – we finished the season fifth conference, 21? No, no, I mean, tw- I was, it's not that long ago. 19? What, we're, not ta- we're not talking tens of years. Well, I just can't I mean, say maybe, I can't remember exactly what year it was. I mean, it's typically been a, at least yeah, a third, I'd have to go third look, place finish. But it's not. I mean, I th- okay, uh, pre-Penny. Let's have that conversation. Pre-Penny, when's the last time? I mean, the conference was also, also much more difficult then. You're talking UConn and Houston and SMU and what? You don't think that the pre Penny conference was tougher than the conference we just played in. How far back we going? I don't know. You tell me. Because those conference USA days were pretty bad. It's kind of who we're well, playing again now. Yeah, we're being frank, but I didn't know you were going that far back. I thought you meant like immediately preceding. I thought you were talking <laughs> no, American no, conference not like Josh preceding. No. Okay. I don't know, but I'm I don't think it was that D. long ago. I'm sticking to a D. Okay. And F seems just in is pretty intense. I'm going F. Can you have to? What do you think? Can y'all give me some latitude to kind of give my grade and explain why? Can you do it quickly? Yes, I can. All right. So yesterday I did this on the uh, post mortem Tiger's Life post mortem. I appreciate that because sometimes I can be a little bit long winded. So um, <laughs> it's one a.m., Kenny. I know. <laughs> I gave a uh, I gave a C plus, and and this is All right, shows ever. Uh, this is why. This is why, and this is what concerned me about the C plus plus. C. We'll go C. C plus. It's like what is a point difference between a C plus and a plus a C. I mean, like, but I I gave it that grade because for me, I mean, in some school systems, a C plus is an eighty three. <laughs> that's true too. Um, I gave it a like for me. A, a, I would have when I was in high school, middle school. My family, we would have celebrated me getting a C, C plus, right? Like it was like a throw a parade in the in the streets, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, y'all both have, have kids and I have kid. I have a, I have a child that's in, um, middle school. And what, what our whole thing is about grading systems is if you work your tail off and you get a C, it's okay. Right? Like we can work through this. We can figure this out because you worked your tail off. But if you get a C and you haven't worked hard, then we got problems. We got to start working through stuff. We got to figure out, okay, what do we need to change in your life to help you work harder? And my fear is that this is this season, as bad as it was, is Penny working his hardest? Did he work his hardest and get a C plus? Did he work his hardest and get a C? Are you basing that off of his statement that he worked 20 hours a day? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Like is this the best like and that scares me for this this program is that is, is it, this the though, best though when you've you have historical evidence that working your hardest is better than a c 
but we're talking about like also TJ the difference and I's between one or two games. Are at the point in school where they're doing like hand painting of yeah a polar bear all white and it doesn't even look like that. So we're not getting Same. grades. So yet. I go a C C plus, but I'm scared that, that that might be the best real, the best we got. Real generous. It does seem a little generous, but we got to do. Um, that's what he wants. That's what Jeffrey he wants Calkins, who's no longer a sports columnist, wrote a sports column um, about how we better not miss Selection Sunday again. By the way, the worst part of this, like, I can't even watch March Madness anymore. Like, I, it ruins it for me completely. I get that. Even, I mean, when we lose, it basically ruins it too. Like, last year after we lost, I couldn't watch anymore. But, yeah. I didn't even watch the selection show yesterday. I had zero interest. Um, and I will probably flip a game on in the background. I'm not going to like sit down and probably watch any game. Sure. I just don't. It it ruins everything about it. And it's the it best. Really does. It's like the best time of the year. Um, anyway, in his article, since 2015, we have made two tournaments and have one tournament win. Are the standards too high? Can we just make a tournament? So I've seen a lot of people make comments about that. And I don't think making the tournament is too high of standards. I don't think that finishing top two or three teams in the conference is too high of a standard. You look at the budget. You look at the NIL comp uh, composition you look at everything that's put into this program, there's no reason for them to not be a top three team in conference. And three, if you're number three, that's a bad year. That's how it should be. Yeah, I don't think like that this is a year, bad... the way we, it should have been three. Yeah, and I don't I don't think those are high expectations. And anyone that says so is making excuses and they're lying to themselves because they feel like they need to protect Penny for whatever reason, because he's a Memphian, because he was their favorite player growing up, stuff like that. That none of that should come into it at all. How much money are you sinking into the program? How talented is this roster? And what are you putting out on the court? And it's this roster was better on paper. The roster is better than a, a 22 and 10 season. And Penny is a better coach than a 20 and 10, 22 and 10 record. Season. Yeah. I so, agree with you. I don't, I don't. I, are we being outrageous by thinking think so. that I making the tournament? I don't think that the standards have gotten any. Nobody's out there saying we have to make the Elite Eight or anything. It's literally like be in the running to win the league, make the tournament, and then let's see what happens from there. I mean, that make it, make the it tournament comfortable is like bottom of the barrel in terms of expectations, right? I mean, MTSU's goal. Is probably to try to win, to make it to the tournament. Yeah. Just random teams I'm throwing out. I think the most frustrating part about the last two seasons, I guess, even though I said I wouldn't really, I had no complaints about last year, with that NCAA tournament and then the path that was just created for us to win the American, those two paths that we had in our grasp to make a Sweet 16 and then to win and actually make the tournament are the most frustrating part to me. Agreed. You couldn't have had easier paths. I mean, playing fairly Dickens, you're getting a 16 seed in the second round, the second game? You serious? Hmm. I'm not going to complain about last year. I'm not either. It's just frustrating. Trey, what I also think people probably wouldn't be as upset if we had gotten past FAU, made a Sweet 16 last year. Right, you probably wouldn't be hearing as much. I think what happens is there was so much excitement build up from how the last season ended, and then you come in, you have this great roster, and so everybody's like, "Oh, well, we, you know, we should have made it last year. We're definitely making it this year." Yeah. Right? Like, I think that kind of plays into it. Um, all right, we are officially too good for the NIT. Uh... That's not how I took that. I think the NIT at this point in time is worthless for. A majority of high major, even most top mid major programs. It just doesn't make sense. The day and age of the transfer portal, NIL, there's no reason. At, at a point in time, the NIT was cool when 
you're trying to establish culture. You have a young team and you want to get them more games, experience playing in the postseason, like something to build on, get momentum going into the offseason, right? Like it felt cool when we won it with Landers and all those guys because we were like, hey, this entire team can come back and they can build off of this. Now that didn't necessarily end up happening because Penny ran off half of them. But you had a core of guys that came back from that year and then the next year went in and made the tournament. But at this point in time, like this day and age, I don't think the NIT that it's I think it's dying. It's gonna become like a really low major mid major tournament. It's like situational, I think. Kind of what you said. Like it, I mean it's, it's still it, but like we're not we're not in a spot where we have like I don't even think that we would have had a full team to play. Yeah. What do we have? Seven or eight fifth year guy? Like they don't have any interest in playing in the NIT. They're not going to come back. They're leaving. They're going to start their professional career. Who yeah. are we rolling out there? Freaking Joe Cooper and Little Rick. That's what I was saying. I think it's situational for Penny, who has already had a rough season, considering how much he put into this season alone. He's got the health stuff with his mom going on. It's working his ass off, and the team just isn't getting it done. I, I think, think he's just burn out. Well, and I think it's just what, what, what do you just, gain from it, right? And it's just like, hey, let's. Just, this did not go the way we wanted it to go. Let's just throw this year away. It's done. Yeah. Let's get in the portal. Let's start looking at next year. Yeah. You get nothing out of it. I mean, I also don't think that the NIT, and just clear this up, the NIT is not like a, that's not an accomplishment. We can agree on that, right? No, it's not. Because it means you didn't make the NCAA tournament. Right. Okay, just making sure we're on the same page. Because a lot of people were using that. They're like, well, he won the NIT a couple years ago. And I was like, why is that? I mean, it's cool in the sense You're the that best you get loser. to watch. I get it. Great. You but get to like, watch your team continue to play basketball and like win a tournament, but no, it's not. I just want to clarify. I, mean, I thought I was in the wrong for a bit there when I was upset that we were going to the NIT. No, not at all. We so you're on the same page. You didn't You didn't take that as we're too good for it. You just no. took it as like, it doesn't make any sense. Why would we do that? Yeah, there's no pros to it. Half your team are grown men who are old enough to rent a car. It's so like, what do you gain out of why did you email? Look, what's the age for that? 25? Yeah, 25, 26, something like that. Speaking of renting cars, if you guys do not ever use budget, what's what do you got against a budget? They're I've like never the, used budget, but they're the only them. rental company that makes you still go to the counter. Gross. When we went to Orlando like a month ago, we did it through Costco, and initially we were getting that five percent back. Well, yeah, but initially we got a smaller mid-size SUV, and they were giving us like, I don't know, they didn't have another rental company, Hertz or something. What? Go ahead. And then we switched and got a full size SUV, and they gave us budget, which we're like, whatever, that's fine. And we show up to the airport, and budget has a line wrapped around the building to go to the counter, and I'm like, no, we've already we've We've established, like, we've gone through this. Where they're like, no, you have to check in at the counter to get the car. And I'm like, since when every other company just tells you what parking space the car is in and you go pick it up, I literally had to wait in line for an hour and a half to check in for them to tell me where the car was. No, don't ever use budget. Why are they doing that? Literally, every other company had not a single person in line. <laughs> it's a great question. Sounds like you should have anyway. entered the car rental portal. Ah. I already paid TJ. <laughs> My NL, NIL check had already cashed with budget. Speaking of the portal, we have our first entry postseason trade. I don't Jonathan think this is a surprise Pierre. to anybody given he showed a little bit of flash against Temple at Temple. What he had 10 points in 15 minutes or something, hit a couple big threes. Um, Average like 10 minutes the next two games, I think, and then never, literally never played. I'm Witness not sure protection. that he ever even was on the bench ever again. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was skeptical of Jonathan Pierre the entire time, and it's not saying he's not talented. I just think that the jump. It's fine. You D2 can say it. I mean, he, he was a bench player in D2. Well, for a little bit, but yeah. 
for it was just a, a big jump. For most of, I, I, for I most never of the thought bit. that he was going to be a true contributor, but I understand the intrigue around him because he's six eight, can shoot the three. I don't. I don't know that it was a talent or a uh, well, transitional issue. Well, uh, I can tell you that it wasn't not. I can't tell you that didn't not play into it. We played the whole damn roster, eighty percent of the games. Yeah, and he could still only pick ten minutes up. I'm just saying. I don't. I think it was more of a personnel. Sure. It was a. It was a fit to quote Penny issue. I don't know. I'm maybe not, I'm wrong. Yeah, I'm not in the locker room. I don't know. I maybe. Was, but based on his comments. I don't know if you saw the article the Parth, but the uh, the word there were two c words oh. thrown out by this young man, chaos, okay, and cancers, Not which are never good when it comes to description of your locker room. Oh yeah, it did feel like a chaotic season though. That one, yes, I can't agree with him there, but. If you're Penny Hardaway, I could not imagine you want players throwing out that the locker is full of. You probably don't want to say cancer anyway. That's such a like that's touchy for Penny right now. Maybe don't use that one, but just chaotic times and everybody's trashing on each other. Like you don't want that. You can't have that getting out there. Um. Anyway, I mean, it's whatever. It is whatever. He's not here. I'm sure he's also probably not the last. If you look at UT Arlington or wherever you land up, I don't know. UT Arlington. He's probably, no. he's probably going back down to Florida. Okay. South Florida, maybe. USF. That'd be great. Maybe FAU. They're going to have any, tons of any, roster spots. Any from down in that region? Couldn't tell you. Honestly, couldn't tell you. So we know that Jonathan Pierre will not be returning. TJ, the- that's not the only... Go ahead. No, you go ahead. I was going to say that's not the only portal news, but I was going to go from the front of go ahead. interest on our side. Well, okay, go for it. That's fine. It's been tweeted by Hitman and several others that we are very interested in Michigan transfer sophomore guard Doug McDaniel. I could be your Doug. You know what that's from? No. Kenny, do you know what that's from? I could be your Doug. Nope. Whatever, dude. Get me out of here. You guys are nerds. I've only known and liked one Doug in this world, and his last name was funny. Uh, Doug. That is from The Hangover with Mike Epps. Who's Doug in The Hangover? The guy that got kidnapped. Hmm. The whole reason the movie. Is that his name? Doug, yes. Interesting. I don't know. I don't remember that. This guy. Uh, yep. Interesting there. I think I remember last year, Doug's name came up a couple of times mm-hmm. preseason. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it felt weird then, and it feels weird now. It feels double weird now. By the way, Penny loves to try to make a big guard, but then he like equally loves small guards. Small gu- yeah, so, so much. Small guard. So much. Small guard. Small guard. Uh, 5'11", 175, soaking wet out of Washington, D.C., he averaged 16 and a half, three and a half rebounds, four and a half assists, mm. shot 41% from the field. I think 38% from three. The kid can hoop. Yeah. Can the problem he, is he wasn't allowed to play away games for most of the year. <laughs> what? Uh, what? Did you not know this? No, I did not watch much Michigan basketball. They all suspended six him. <laughs> You didn't know this? From only away game so that he could stay in Ann Arbor and study. He was allowed to play home games, but he couldn't play on the road. So culturally, a perfect oh, fit. Perfect. Yes. Perfect. Good perfect. Given, given the academic issues yeah. that we're currently having. A traffic cone on defense and a bad student. Although, <laughs> goodness gracious. Memphis is slightly easier than Michigan. Hey, I'm going to let you know, Michigan – says he is known for his playmaking abilities and for being he is a defensive offensively disruptor. I looked at his advanced stats and that that ain't checking out. Offensively, yes. Very fast, shifty, quick, can score it, facilitates. I mean, he's averaged 1.1 steals both years he's played at Michigan. But when Penny comes out and he says he's looking for fit and getting back to defense first and then this is the first name yeah. That pops up with us being in contact or interested in. I'm like, woo, 
defense is I mean, whatever. Maybe it thinks they're he's played two years. He's only a sophomore. He's got a lot of growth left in him, and Penny's confident in his ability to get him to be a true disruptor. And maybe it's a Kendrick Davis situation where he gives you enough defensively and he's not a huge liability, but he totally makes up for it offensively. And I'll, I'll consider with that. I'll consider it. I do think it is an er- if you're coming out the gate, the first thing you do is grab Doug. I'm a little skeptical on I mean there's the no doubt that he is a year. great point guard. It's just when you say things like I'm getting back to my defensive minded philosophies yeah. and then and it's, that's the thing, dude. You go out and get the five eleven quick shifty <clears throat> offensive. Focus. I want a guard that can just yam it. We don't have I think, that. I think Doug can dunk it. You think so? Yeah. You have proof of that? What do you mean yam it though? Just absolutely cock. Why do you what? want a guard that can do that? Because it's fun. Mm. It's fun. Is it not fun? Is this? I mean, it is. I just didn't know why specifically you wanted just, like a point guard that could do that. Just I want everybody to yam it. I mean, you're just wanting like a jaw. Not a post. We got any eligibility left? I think he'd be pretty good for us, right? I mean, he did only play two years. Three? That works like that. I don't know. He's got a COVID year. Uh, I just think you could do better than Doug. I'm not against. I mean, it. I'm not. Yeah, it's early. What the portal opened today, so like there are going to be plenty. Sure. What do, I mean? What were we talking about last year? Like three thirty five hundred guys or something entered the portal. Yep. I mean, people are out there. People are out there doing calculations and running metrics, saying it's going to be double that this year. Well. Well, I won't say that. You hear that dog barking? I do hear the dog barking. I'm a little confused. Kenny, can I you turn that off? I don't know how far we are from a dog. I just don't want to settle on Doug when we got Jaden Ivy Curry out there just sitting in the wind waiting for us. You know what I'm saying? Counterpoint. Let's go ahead and settle him and get our roster established before we get to, I don't know, September. Let's get our, what yeah, is that'd be great. Kenny, can you just yell at that dog to stop? I'll close the window. I'm just trying to make sure our cars don't get broken into. <laughs> I mean, I oh. What's going on? We, in we all the, the year that we've been recording here, I've never, never once heard, heard a heard dog. dog bark. Like, I mean, this is constant. <laughs> Are uh, these supposed to be noise-canceling headphones? Dog barks besides dog, dog barks. All right. Anything else basketball-related before we take a break? Um. No. Hey, Let's bring Doug in. Let's make him a gnat defensively and build around DJ and Doug. Well, let's, yes. Who do you think's coming back? Good question. Um, do you want David Jones back if it's a possibility? Yeah. As your sixth man again? <laughs> we'll see how the roster lays out. Again, we'll see how the roster lays out. Uh, who do I think is returning? Is that what you asked? Who would you want to return? David Jones and. I'll take Temple guy. <laughs> well, he is coming. Back. I was going to. I was like, please say Nick Jordan because he is coming back. No, um, no, I like Jordan. I I think he is good at what he does, and he showed flashes throughout the year that he could be someone you build off of. So I think those I agree two, with what for sure. And Carl, I have no problem. Yes. with Carl, we didn't see much of him, but absolutely, that's good. I don't want to see a lot of true freshman play. Um, uh, I could I could take some Carl minutes back for sure. Yeah, and that's about it. I think if if David is coming back and you can build around him and know what you need, good. You get you a good point guard, whether it's Doug or not. I don't know. You bring back Carl. I think it's a good cultural guy that can help you establish that. Bring back defensive, hard nosed identity. I think you bring Jordan. That's another hustle guy that can help you kind of establish that returning, get your culture going. Mills' name has been thrown around about applying for an injury waiver. If he gets it, yes, I will. Absolutely Rumors take him back. are that he and DJ want to play together if that's capable. And I would take. I think those are your four you build around. You fit the pieces as needed. Ashton, I don't know. Outside of what the Michigan game? What game was that? Arkansas, yeah, Michigan. Didn't get me. Yeah, it's a, an outlier. A whole me, lot of but anything. I mean, he could shoot the three. He's a big body. Like, I think he provided good minutes. He just got hurt, and I think he got it. Like, is he out of eligibility? No, I think he has a year left. Does he? Mm-hmm. Who? Jalen Young. 
Oh, yeah. He's Wouldn't got he just more. a, a yeah, junior? He's got one more. I wouldn't. I mean, I'm not opposed to bringing him back in another backup role type of thing. Yeah. But I'm not like, I'm not going to be just gutted if he, he moves on. I don't know if Joe Cooper has a year left, but he if does. you made me pick between Joe Cooper and Jalen Young, I don't, I don't know who I'm picking. Stop. What, what do you mean, stop? Who are you picking? You just said you want somebody to yam. Jalen can yam. Joe Cooper could probably yam. Probably. Stop it. Joe Hooper. You guys are you gotta my stop guy Joe Hooper you, you, right you, now. You got to stop with this whole like. <laughs> Look, I'm not against Joe Cooper, but that was crazy talk. <laughs> I like Joe Hooper, dude. Joe Hooper is a fantastic player. I, I said this earlier. Walk ons are not all made the same, <laughs> and it's clear. Yeah, I'm not. I would not be. I'm, I hope he's back. But to try to say you would take him over Jalen, you <laughs> tell Young to get the hell out of here so you can have Cooper still. No, I, I think people forget Jalen Young the first half of the year when he was getting bigger, like more minutes. People, right? are you talking to yourself? Here? Yeah, talking yeah. to myself. Uh, I, not just myself. I'm sure other people because it has been a while since he's played significant minutes. Like he's got that dog in him sometimes. He does. Like and he's we, a, he is a he's a the dog defensive minded guard yeah and I I think they could build off him so I'm good with that I mean there were times earlier in the year we were saying he's a he's what we wanted Alex to be he's a six <laughs> what why was that so nothing, funny nothing. <laughs> nothing are you about to send me some ridiculous we're going to break because <laughs> no. TJ's about to send me some no, kind of photo I'm not nothing. A six three Alex. That's what I was gonna say. What someone over six foot tall? <laughs> Whatever. All right. That's where we will uh we'll leave it there. The portal's open, wide open as of today. Do you know when it closes, Kenny? Do we have a date on the closing of the portal? Uh let me check on that. I don't know. Isn't exactly. it right? I think it's dependent on I think it's right after the tournament's over, right? Or like a week out, two weeks It after? feels weird for it to open up specifically for the tournament, but well, they, I mean, they now they have a closing date now. Like, you got to get in at a specific time. If you need any portal news, you want to know anyone who's hitting the portal, you need to follow our guy, Bada. He will give you <laughs> any update for anyone ever hitting the portal, no matter if they are a Tiger hopeful or if if they've never played basketball before, but they're just on a roster. Bada has got I think you. a couple of the tweets he sent have been NAI guys. <laughs> Baby Paige Stoyakovich, his son, is in the portal. <laughs> Potential Tiger. There might have guys. been a fraternity uh, intramural <laughs> post in there as well. So, we'll see. Yeah, jump in the Discord. We got all the portal news. And we'll be right back to talk about <laughs> a little bit of football. Oh, It's here. News. We'll be right back. Yeah. Two bits of introspection besides all the nonsense that he was saying. Because yeah. he did, oh, we had the greatest plans ever. You know, they just didn't execute. It's right. like, well, it's your job to make them execute. Yeah. And then uh, uh, he said something about, uh, you know, what went wrong? Somebody said, what went wrong this year? And he said, well, I don't know. And then he's like asking the players. He's like, do you, do you want me to ask him? What went wrong? And they're yeah. like, I don't know. That You need to know that. If you want to be successful going into the future, you need to know the answer to that question. For sure. The problem I have with Penny and like the words he says... A lot of those words never actually amount to action. I know he said he thinks he's done a great job and all these, he's had these type of messages where he feels like he's being a little bit victimized. I just, all I can do is hope that he uses this as a springboard and a learning, a learning tool, tool going, going forward. forward. But do I believe that to be the case? No, probably not. Right. Tune in to On the Bluff with Christian Fowler and Gabe Kuhn every Tuesday at 12 p.m. on the Bluff City Media YouTube channel. I'm 44 years old, bro. Like, I remember, like, real Tiger basketball, bro. Like, when this, like when Tiger basketball was our shit and our only shit, bro. I struggle with knowing that I'm caping for Penny, knowing I'm not going to say 
the foul shit. I'm not going to question whether he can coach. I'm not going to say they should fire him. I'm not going to do none of this stuff. Right. Right? I came in and said how I wrestled with that. Like, I know I'm not being genuine. Yeah, there are some people saying fire him. Most people, we're giving fair criticism. Right. We ain't saying fire him. <laughs> ain't nobody saying it. <laughs> and the only person that, like, you can say, like, <laughs> is saying some wild shit is Jeff Calkins. Y'all niggas ain't blowing his, his Twitter up, though. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you come to me. <laughs> right? You know what I mean? It is killing me, bro. It is mm -hmm. absolutely killing me. It is absolutely tripping yeah. me out. Like, and I'm older than all these dudes. Like, I, I watched Penny play. Y'all know Penny from buying fucking shoes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Y'all don't know nothing about Penny Hardaway, bro. I try to think what they want to say. You ain't see Penny with the bullet in his foot? Kiss my ass. Like, what are y'all talking about? Tune in to The Anthony Sane Show, Wednesdays and Fridays at 12 p.m. weekly on the Bluff City Media YouTube channel. Welcome back. That dog is still going strong. He did not take a break. What dog is that? Y'all took a break, but he did not. He did not stop bar. I not guy. I'm like I know you guys can't hear it on the pod, but it is constant, nonstop barking. It's unbelievable. I'm wondering if someone's trying to break in our cars for real. I mean, maybe because it's right. Looked it's out the, the window. It, well, it's the house right there. It's the house right there. Let me go look. All right. Well, Kenny is looking at that. Trey, we have football news. Huge. For the first time. Football news. In a while. We have a timeline. We have new renderings yeah. of the renovations. I'd say they're new. Uh, they are. They updated them. Yeah. Which look, honestly, I want to, I mean, is it, dare I, do I, dare I say better, which I didn't even think was possible because yeah. the first renderings. Let me pull them up so I can reference them. Here. Were amazing. I think they do look good, man. Um, timeline start. It's in three phases, right? Yep. $220 million project. Uh, phase one is set to begin in May. Phase one will be updating, uh, I think, the suites on the west side of the state, so the away side, and also moving... Okay, I don't know what they have to move, but making it a the ability to film... Is the what? west side the away side? Yeah. It's the home side. Is it? Home side. The home side. Whatever. The away side is what they're updating. Yeah. The press boxes. They're moving the coaching over there, mm -hmm. TV crew, so that the home side will be on camera now. Um, Do we like that? Yeah. I, I mean, sure. we've been calling for it forever. Yes, for sure. Like, let's showcase the home side of the stadium on TV. Yeah. The funniest you, part of it, though, is that they're doing this now. And they're moving everybody to the away side of the stadium because of the renovations happening. So we're going from showing the empty side of the stadium to showing the side we wanted to show, but it's going to be empty as well for the next two years. Or under construction. Partially. Yeah, partially. Yeah, I guess the lower level seat backs are <laughs> yeah. still available, like where my parents and, and others sit are still available. Um, but that'll be the first phase. Phase two will begin as quickly as possible after that. Uh, which includes the transformation of the west side, so the homestead, modern-day premium seating, founder suites, boxes, private suites. Mm -hmm. And then the biggest part of it all was that like party plaza area. Yeah. Tell me that doesn't look It looks awesome. Sick. It, it looks reminds sick. me of like Redbird Stadium where you like walk in. Over home plate. Yeah. And yeah. you've got like the uh, Except for that's, concourses. You know, obviously yeah, it's yeah. covered and stuff, but like you have a wide open. You could watch the whole game from there yeah. if you wanted to. I mean, it, it looks awesome. If you if you have not, if you're listening to this and you haven't gone either to Commercial Peel, Daily Memphian, Twitter, and seen the new renderings, you need to go look at them. Which I'll say it, shout out to Jonah. Jonah Dillon, I think, had that first at CA. They look sick. And they put that together. It looks real nice. I'm really excited about it. Um, it is, unfortunately, with the delay of the, the rights to the stadium, the funding, everything that happened with the delay and not starting till May, it is now. Originally, was not supposed to impact the 2025 season. was supposed to be done and opening for the 2025. Yeah. But we will now have to play two seasons 
under construction. And I think they said, correct me if I'm wrong, it's going to limit the capacity to like low 30s. Yeah. Positive spin. <laughs> we, might, we might sell out every game, <laughs> especially if they're winning. I know sure. this year's home schedule isn't anything to write home about, but we can get 30 a night there. Yeah, I mean, we have been getting 25, 26, I think, announced. So I think, and, and with this Tigers team this year, they should be able to get 30. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think your last four or five games last year, you got 30 plus every game. Well, yeah, they were winning. Yeah. Right? As long as you're winning, the people will come. One thing that I thought looked super sick was right above the party plaza are going to be the little club seatings. So it's that's almost like uh, that's phase three, which we didn't get to, but initially. Sorry. The part I'm just saying. And it, Sorry, Trey. I'm just saying that's if the funding at me. if that if the funding gets there, they're able to do all three phases, it will become yeah, you'll have club seating that kind of comes over that party plaza. But right now, I think fake news, that's phase two. No, the party plaza is phase two. The No. I'm looking at You're it. wrong. The club seating over the plaza wrong. was phase three. Wrong. What are you talking Wrong. about? Look, phase three. Phase three will commence when the university has the commitments for the full $50 million it plans to fundraise. It will add another layer of seats on top of the party plaza. Wrong. Phase three. Phase three is like the locker room updates, the letting the I, semi-trucks in. I understand. I'm going based off the University of Memphis's post that they put out. You dork. And they say phase two includes... The boxes and the suites above and things like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The boxes and the suites are in that this part. No, 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 no. Yes. No, 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 no sir. Okay. No, sir. Well, I'm about to fight. <laughs> Let's do it then, pickle boy. See, this is phase two. There's no club seating. It's just open. Phase three, club seating's added. It's not as open. Okay, well, that's not what the U of M has listed here. Okay. Anyway, it's phase. It's three phases. It's not. We're gonna have to play two years of thirty k, and it, in two years, Arkansas comes to town. I'll be fine with that, dude. It's gonna be up against it, and that's unfortunate, but um, I think it's worth it. And we're gonna be coming off of a playoff run. Freaking like this. Yes, we are. What are you looking at? The pictures. I'm zooming in, trying to see what food concessions they have here. They're not going to stop. Uh, two years of 30s, and then the overall, when everything's finished, is going to be right at 50,000. So you're looking at, like, I think the, the capacity today is 58-something-odd. So just a cut of 8,000. I think 50 is a – with that stadium, by that point, you're sure. probably in the ACC or Big 12. I think that's feels pretty good. I think that's good. Yeah. Anyway, I'm very excited about it. I can't wait till May when they get started. Um, and somehow I think they've they've improved, and it's going to be even cooler than I imagined it was going to be. Well, like I said, in phase three, when they get the club seating above, mm. um, I'm just going with the eight. Look, I'm telling you what they say versus what the pictures are showing are two separate things. I got gotcha. you. You're a sicko for it. You just nomin on that. Um, we all said it was good. It it looks like it, for those that have been in a Grizz game, like right above mm. 109 and 110, like that right above the suite level. There's like those horizontal rows yep. of like chairs and yep. TVs at desk. Yep. That, that's kind of what it looks like here. And if so, that's that's super dope because you're able to kind of yeah. watch a game, even maybe even the game you're live at. You could watch that on the TV right there. Yeah. It's Plus, like you're it's just almost, so much easier to eat. It's like you're it really watching is. it from home, but you're also at the game at the same time. You yeah. can hang out with your buddies. You the, and yeah. Stuff. I mean, yeah. the best part of the potty, potty pla party plaza is open to everybody. You don't have to like a ticket. It's not a VIP section. It's like, yeah. I will say anybody can go over there. Between the two rendering, like the two pictures, the party plaza looks very deep in. Phase yeah, two. It almost looks like it is for the like the very back half of the stadium. Like yes, it looks huge. like it goes from where if you're on the home side, you're walking around the halo that's right above the chair backs. Like you know what I'm talking about, that yeah. area from there all the way to the back to like the recruiting ramp like the yeah. uh, that recruiting room. It's massive. Which is a lot of space. And I think they said it the the seating in front of it will be twenty four rows of seats, I yeah. think. 
I imagine it's just whatever the lower bolt, yeah. right where you step out of the chair back. Yeah, the chair the platform. Yeah. It's just going to be cut off there. But it, it looks very cool. I think it'll look great on TV. Um, it's really going to modernize the stadium. Like you said, in phase three is locker room things. It's improvements for the, and all that. the concourse to allow trucks to unload and load so concerts can potentially come back. A um, lot of potential there. So very exciting. Uh, can't wait to see it when it's done. Tune back in two years. Yeah, see what it come looks back like. So two have years. they announced like where fans can donate money to to like match that donation? Is that yes. I mean on Venmo at TJ Willis? <laughs> <laughs> yes. You'll make sure um, it gets to them. You'll make sure, sure it gets to the right people. Yes. It's not in the release today, but I I mean it's part of the drive that they're yeah. having fundraising, and part of what's funding that is the purchase of those founders boxes, the lounge, the club, like. The premium seating, some of that is funding as well. Yeah. But he, I mean, Veach said today, it's not, I mean, you're not, if TJ and I committed to a milli right now, it's more of like a five year deal thing, right? Which y'all can do. Yeah. Why don't y'all do that right now? We're just giving 200K a year, not, see the way not my just finances work, not just <laughs> see the way my bank account is set up. <laughs> I got um, a checking in a savings. We don't have to. We don't have to straight up write a one one milli check right now. It's over several years of a commitment. So, but this if you're is, interested in donating, contact the University of Memphis. Laird specifically, I guess. I don't know. It's so unique, though, and I know we've already talked about it. It's so unique if they don't get to adding those suites, and it is just like all of that space. This is going to be terrible. Like. You guys see what I'm talking about here? You yeah, see that, obviously? Great. Yes. Clearly, they can see it from a mile away here. There's a lot of room there. I think that's going to look so interesting. There's a lot of room to party. Yeah. Like I mean, I, I do. all space that's open there. Yeah, I think it, with the club seats on top of it, will look much better. It does look better with the club seats, I agree. So you'll get there. But, I, I mean, I think the Party Plaza idea is a great idea. It is. Except they're showing tents. I'm like, yeah, you can't bring your own tent in, so are they going to supply tents? Like, how are you going to get out of that hot-ass sun? I don't know that it's – I think that's just renderings. I don't know that there's going to be – You better have some type of sun coverage. I think that's just them – well, that's just them showing that there's going to be concession there. That's like a way for them to show that. I'm trying to zoom in, and it's – Do you see the concessions? I see Brookhaven – and Prana Pub. It looks like there's two like bars down there. This is going to be great, DJ. Yeah, I don't know what those are. I was looking at that. You got to have a bar. You think about on the home side, you know where you walk into that bar and it's just hella crowded. It's got all the TVs right there. Yeah. Imagine that just flipped and your back is now to the game. Even, yeah. Even the upper level suite area looks awesome. Yeah. You actually have outdoor balcony seating as opposed to like, Having to slide that glass pane to open or close and only sitting inside. Yeah, those those suites are um, interesting to <sighs> say the least. I don't like sitting up there because you feel so disconnected from the game. I've been like, there one time, and the person that was, I guess, in charge of that suite didn't want to open up the windows. Yeah, and you can't and you can't hear. Yeah, you, you can't. I mean, it's, it's just yeah, not good. So this will be. I think this will be cool. You'll have the outside. Again, somewhere to like AutoZone or somewhere else that has two, seat, yeah. two rows of outside seating and then the suite area is inside yeah. a sliding glass door. I'm good right? with that. Um, so, anyway, I think it's going to be badass. It's going to be, I mean, probably the best G5 stadium at this point. In I the mean, country. if you get that done, I mean, you're talking. If you're even still I, in the G5. Yeah, even outside of group of five, at the, I think at that point. It starts, yeah. I mean, you're you're up there with. Best stadiums. Uh, other football news, TJ, in this last couple of minutes, reported today that Ryan and the university are very close to signing his extension. Good. That's a couple couple months overdue. They talked about this on On the Bluff, but is it not crazy how much the, the contract – talks around the two different programs, main programs with the University of Memphis has switched over the last few months. A little bit wild, isn't it? In what way? Like, what do you mean what's wild about it? 
I don't think anybody is sitting there questioning whether or not Ryan Silverfield should get an extension. Uh, there were there they, are a couple. I, people I will say for the way the, the way the season ended changed a lot. That Iowa State game, that Liberty Bowl game, changed everything. Before it, a hundred percent people were not. He does not deserve it. Yeah, they're like this he is, doesn't need a raise for media expectations. Right, was yeah. the big thing. So in a similar fashion, I think, and obviously it's not. This isn't necessarily fair because it's much. I would say it's much tougher to do than it was for Ryan and the football team to win a bowl game at home. But in a similar sense, if Penny and the team had gone out, won the conference tournament, made the NCAA tournament, and then even just won a first round game, I don't. I think discussions would probably be the same. Feelings would probably be around the same for both. It's just that's that's a little bit more difficult to do because you're asking a coach to win yeah, four games in four days in a basketball setting and then win an NCAA tournament as opposed to winning what I'm not discrediting. I mean, I think the win against Iowa State was great, but it was also a home game. Essentially, it's one game. It's one game. That you had a month to prepare for. Sure. But there's just been a lot of positive momentum. Oh, absolutely! I'm with not, the football yeah, program, absolutely. Even I, in the off, not, yeah. like with the with FedEx getting involved with the college football playoff stuff, there just that. seems to be a lot of momentum. Yeah, there's a there's a lot of positives coming from football. But to be honest, three months ago it wasn't like that. I mean, when we were throwing a hail mary to beat UNT and then going to overtime with Charlotte, there wasn't a whole lot of positives coming out of that. Yeah. So yeah, but a hundred percent in the last two months, three months, it's definitely changed, and it's not all due to that Iowa State win. Like you said, we're opening up real possibility. The stadium plans getting announced. It's extremely exciting, especially with conference realignment stuff going on. The playoffs expanding that gives you a legitimate shot at winning a national title. Yep. You are going to be the favorite. And I mean, you're already getting a lot of pub for being what most people are considering the best or going to be the G5 representative. You're going to be probably the unanimous conference favorite, which you haven't, I mean, you haven't been voted to finish higher than third since 2019. I don't think they will be voted. Maybe not favorite. unanimous, but I think you're going to. Uh, I think, I think it'll be, be too late. To be the conference favorite? Yeah. With a whole new staff. Well, a proven staff. And quarterback, Troy, new quarterback. Who came from Oregon. It was like a five-star at Oregon or something like that. Yeah, he's a, he's a, I, I we'll just see. think that Tulane's going to get a lot of nods. I could see it. Summerall has done this before successfully at other schools. Sure. And you're building off of a, an existing roster that's done well. So I could see them getting more nods. I could see that happening, but I still would say I think that we're going to be the favorite to win. Psh, should be. It won't be unanimous. How about that? Yeah. I'll take it. All right. What else, Teach? Spring practice starts tomorrow. Today. Well, started yesterday, if you're listening to this. Depends when we come Gosh. back. Who knows? We filmed these three months in advance. That's rude. <laughs> That's just rude. I, what? Sometimes. That's just rude. What did sometimes he say? you that have tech issues that you don't he, load. I didn't hear what he said. That what did he say? What did he say? It was disrespectfully rude. What did he say? I don't like it. Didn't like it. Made what did me he feel, say? Made me feel a kind of way. I didn't hear it. So it depends when our episode comes out. Oh. I'm still waiting on episode. Then he from, started talking about tech issues. It, you, Which is clearly a shot. That wasn't. No. That's your homie back here. It's performance issues, and it's not you. <laughs> stop stop oh it. Oh, my gosh. TJ sent me a answer. They have Clawson. This is what you were talking about, Kenny. Clawson pickle-flavored jelly beans yeah. now. I'm bringing those next week. Uh, Kenny, have you ever done... Um, Heroin? <sighs> Just kidding. Have you ever played... Rumors and Allegations. Bean Boozled. Yes. You said you were bringing it I and know. you didn't. I, I forgot. It's at my desk. I'll bring it. Uh, Why is it at work? Because sometimes I just like to pop one at work just to gamble a little bit with myself. Did is it Tutti Fruity? Is one? it Dirty Socks? I don't know. We'll find out. Gosh. It's a sick game I play. Kenny, Kenny I, I got a new job in two weeks. You. TJ and I are going to be sitting like 100 yards from each other. Yeah, not work. very far at all. What? Yeah. Y'all aren't going to get anything done. That's not true. We get this episode recorded very and efficient. done every week. Uh, nothing else football related to for me. We'll get into the, uh, I don't want to say depth chart aspect of it. We'll get into the, the meat and potatoes way of spring too ball. Early. Oh, yeah. yeah. Just kind of what position battles we're looking at, things like that. O-line. 
as we go. You know, is it not? We got six months, fellas. We got it's a lot. Too long. I know. Well, I think we could still put out a a post spring depth chart and then a fall depth chart because it's going to change. Like people are coming back off of injuries and stuff like that. Like the the portal will reopen. Yeah, we'll have some losses, some gains. I don't think they'll have that many gains, but I guess it's dependent on losses. But yeah. Let's talk about some mop top. We're cooking up dope in a crock pot. I thought it was good. For an English brown. I'll let you know, the first couple of sips were not good because I had the pickle aftertaste. Couldn't get that green out of apple. Mouth. Whatever. I will say this worked tonight because it's actually cold outside again for yeah. whatever reason. Low tonight's like 30. This hit the spot. If this had been like a warm March evening, probably wouldn't have been as good. It's also it's so weird. It's cold, but like allergy season, it's there. My nose is stopped up. Like I can't All of a breathe. Sudden you dude. sound very allergic. It's been that way the entire time. I've been trying to play it off, but I'm very nasally. Like you hear me talking, I plug my nose. It kind of sounds the same. It's just what it is. Very. But congested. you haven't sounded nasally the whole time until just now. I have now. been. The medicine's probably wearing off. Is what's going on. That is what's happening. Um, again, it's hampline. You know, it's going to have a bear on a bike. That's their thing. Our dude Natchez, but he's got a hairdo. Give him credit job. for that. Looks like more of like a bowl cut. Uh, Carmely, traditional English-style brown ale with a hint of chocolate malt. Toasty, robust classic. Will make you want to twist and shout. I think it's good. Again, same can as always. It, I mean, they're fine. I'm going like 6.3 on the can. It's fine. 6.5. That sounds about right. They gave him a mop top. That's where we're typically at with uh, Hamplon, it seems. How's he riding this tricycle with the the guitar plugged in, though? The guitar's not plugged in. What do you mean? Is that what that is? It's a cord. It's an electric guitar. I didn't even pay attention to that. Uh, Unless that's a tapeworm coming out of his anus. Yeah, that's a good one. I don't know. I have more questions now. My score is lowering. Would you say six what? Six five. Six five. I'm gonna have to lower it now that you've explained that aspect to it. Maybe like a six for me. Six flat. Wow. They're just kind of boring cans. Yeah, I mean, it's the same thing. Natchez riding trike, always in the same spot. What you think of the beer? Definitely I think it's caramely. Good. It is. That. Definitely get the dark chocolate uh, malt, but it's good. Alcohol content's a little bit low. It is a little low. Four nine. Oh. Imagine if this had been one of those eleven percenters you gave us two weeks ago, three <laughs> weeks ago. Um, but it is good. I do think it needs to be like a chili, like it is tonight. Though I'm not, I'm not sitting out on a patio in May and drinking one of these though. Probably no. I'm gonna give it's it also a-, a good dessert beer. Does not pair well with uh, dill pickle gummies though. So don't. Lay off the dill pickles if you're going to have an old mop top. I think I'm going to give it a 6.7 on the beer, mostly because it's right at the cusp of I would want another, I would drink another. I don't think I would unless it's like freezing cold outside kind of situation, and I think it's too close to call. So I'm just going to go 6.7. That feels right. I would drink another one. You would? Okay. Um, But it would have to be the right setting. It would have to be the right, like you were saying, like. That set the mood. It had to be sitting outside. Be chillier. What's the score? I don't know if I'd do two pints, but I could do two 12ers. I don't even know if they make it in 12. Do they not? I don't know. Is any of Hamplines beer in 12? Are they all pints? I've only seen pints, which I respect. So then I'd probably do one and a half. Um, It is good, though, for a brown ale. Is seven one too high? (laughs) I pre wrote that in for you. Well, you saw. We are tss, 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 wavelengths. I pre rate that in for you. 7 1. Should we rate the pickle gummy? Let's do it. Kenny, you go first. On looks, on look, looks is looks, like texture, 3.2 feel. Yeah. I terrible. Mean, this is a 2 7 thing. So dense. But in terms of taste, I'm a gummy fan. How, okay. In terms of snacks, are y'all gummy fan? Like, y'all like chocolate or like. Road snacks, gummies, chocolate. What are you at? What's your go-to? Okay, well, if it's candy, I'm probably going gummy. 
Gummies are the fa- are my favorite candy by far. Um, but snacks in general, I mean, I'm like a popcorn Chex Mix mm. kind of gal. But candy I, wise, I'm going gummy. I could probably eat my body weight in peanut M Ms. Really, I could eat my body weight in gummies. They are good. But they're I, they're so just good. something, that, dude. Kenny, you got to get on the nerds clusters. Um, Alicia was talking about those. I've never heard of them. I can't. I've literally never Why? heard of them because I have diabetes oh. now. I'm sorry. I, did. Yeah, I forgot about that. Damn, dude. Seriously? Wait, how many sugars in this? Did you I consult don't. his doctor beforehand? Uh, no, I'm feeling it in here. Are you? No. Sorry, Tracy. Tracy's going to she's gonna smack hey, you. Hey, it's only 19 grams of sugar. <laughs> and I For the and, whole pickle? No. Uh, the whole pickle would be was like, wow. 60 grams. But I didn't even give you a third of it. So you probably had 10 grams of sugar. Oh, Lord. Is that too many? 10 grams too many? Well, I just need to go and I eat think some protein. Yeah. I think you try to eliminate what you can. I don't think, in terms of sugar, I don't think pickle gummies are like ideal. I mean, yeah, like a gummy source probably, of sugar. Yeah, for sure. Anyway, it's a shame that you can't. But I liked it though. It tasted honestly. It tasted good. It does. It's good. It's just the fact that it smells like a pickle, but it's actually a green apple green taste apple. is what throws you off. Like I go, like I'm gonna go, like. Ate one in taste. Whoa. Really? Like, it was really good. I'm going to go the other way because I expected it to taste like a pickle. So did I. I, I was I'm like it's a five good, too. But I'm disappointed because I was expecting dill pickle. I'm not going that low because it is good. It is good, but I am I thinking think it's, it's going to taste eight, like a pickle. But I think it would be like a 7-7 seven, seven taste-wise. If I if you told me it was green apple, but yeah, I'd probably put it in the sevens. Yeah. But I was told it was a pickle. Presentation-wise, like though... I mean, this thing is, it's thick, it's dense, it smells like a pickle, looks like a pickle. I don't know. I don't know what to score it there. Have you ever taken a sip of something, think it was like water, and it ends up being like Coke or a tea or something like that? You're like, uh, No, because That's kind of what the vibe is Coke there. is brown and water is clear. If it's in a... Oh. What color? black what color is the liquid inside uh i will tell you one of the worst things in the world though is thinking that you're eating a dill pickle and it ends up being a sweet pickle now sweet pickles are like disgusting 10.0 out of 10 for me i love sweet pickles you and my what is father a sweet pickle you ever had a sweet pickle don't is it never had a you've never had a no. sweet pickle on a hamburger bread, oh, bread no. and butter is totally i've had different. like sweet relish i guess that's a sweet pickle. sweet yes pickle. that would be but just like, chopped up sweet pickles once or twice in my life. My dad loves sweet pickles, and it's disgusting. I've Sorry, never dad, had a bite you. out of a sweet pickle. Sweet pickles are gross. Pickles are supposed to be dill. Anyway, there's a lot of pickle talk. Um, hey, if you want to uh, get all the insider news, keep up with a portal, everything happening, sign up on YouTube. We'll be having a uh, insiders only podcast with Hitman Hoops. He's got all the breaking news, so sign up for that. Subscribe to uh, YouTube, like this video, comment. TJ and I are in there in the comments. We'll we are chat with you, like your comments, like the video, and then come back with a cold beer and save without takes next week. We're out. If you enjoyed this episode of Tigers Untapped, leave a rating and a review wherever you download your podcasts. Like and subscribe at Bluff City Media's YouTube page. Head over to www.bluffcitymedia.co for comprehensive coverage of Memphis sports.